Hi, this is Elizabeth from Felted Sky Studio, here with the instructions for our Winter Snow Needle Felting Kit. So if you've purchased the kit, there are just a couple other things that you'll need before you get started. One is to be sure you have a foam mat to use as a work surface. So you just want to make sure your foam is dense enough and thick enough that your needle is not going to poke through it. So this is the one that we carry, but you may have a different foam that you're going to use, and that's fine. You also might want to get out a nice scissors to have handy for the very end of the project where we're going to need to cut some extra wool off when we're finished. Okay, so let me go ahead and open up the kit and show you what's inside. So you can familiarize yourself here. So this is a pre-felt. So this is 100% wool as well as the other wool in the kit. And I actually make this pre-felt myself from wool that's uh, grown near me in Kentucky. So this is what we'll be using for the backing, kind of like the canvas that we are working on. And then in the kit we also have quite a bit of roving in this one. So the roving here is just a preparation of wool that would be made into this before it gets turned into yarn. And this comes in kind of a thin rope and the fibers are all fairly aligned going in the same direction. The other type of preparation we have in here is a batting. So the batting is nice and fluffy and it has more texture and the fibers are still kind of going in more than one direction. They're still kind of just going all over the place a little bit. So that's the batting. And then I just want to mention about the needle. And this piece of foam board here is the felting needle. And these are very sharp here at the bottom. They definitely hurt if you get poked with one. So it's in the foam board both to keep the needle from getting bent or broken, but also to keep anyone from getting poked with the needle. So it's a good idea, especially if you have pets or kids in your house, to always store your needle back in the foam board or another place you might want to keep it is in the side of your foam mat. I will sometimes stick mine in my mat if I don't have it in the foam board. Okay, and then on the instructions here, I just want to point out that there is a list of the colors, so you can kind of get yourself organized uh, before you start if you want. And also, by each step, these are all um, pictures taken from the video, and then there's a time stamp by each number here that shows where that step happens in the video. So it's really nice if you want to follow along with your instructions, you could fast forward or rewind and just get to the parts, either that the only, only the parts that you want to see if you don't feel like you need to watch the whole video, or if you want to watch anything again, you can fast forward and rewind very efficiently if you're following with the instructions. Okay, so now I think we are ready to get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put down our piece of pre-felt here on the mat, and then we're going to put in the sky. So I'm going to show you on the original here. We're starting with the darkest color first, then the medium blue, and then the lighter blue will be down near the horizon line behind the trees. So this is blueberry, the darker blue, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to do what's called drafting, just a tiny bit. So I'm going to take it between my hands and pull just very gently, and this is going to kind of flatten it out a bit and kind of smooth out the fibers so they're all kind of laying in the same direction. So that was just a tiny, tiny bit of drafting, and then I'm going to set it down right on the pre-felt, and I'm going to hold here and pull off the excess. And I'm going to do maybe two uh, of those on here. So I'll overlap them slightly, then pull off the excess. I'm going to find my medium blue 
which is huckleberry. I'm going to do the same thing, just pull very gently. This just kind of smooths it out just a little bit. And I'm going to overlap this and pull off the excess there. And then I can decide, I'm not sure if I want two of these, or I could pull a little bit up. Here's where you have some discretion if you want to change things about your sky. You can even pull just a tiny bit of this huckleberry and put it up here. So you arrange however you like the sky, and then we're going to get the last blue here, which is blueberry ice. I just do my gentle drafting there, and I'm going to put one of these in, and then pull off. So here is our sky, it goes about to the halfway point. And once I have that laying how I want, I'm just going to take the needle, and this is when we start the felting. So all we're going to be doing is poking straight down through the fiber, and you can hear the needle going into the mat, that's what it sounds like. And that's fine, that's what we're doing with this project, that's why we have the mat here. So all we're going to do is poke all over this fiber we just laid out, and we're going to just poke it. Very simple, we're just going to poke it until it's all laying down flat and attached to the mat. So you can see that it's already starting to do that. So we just need to kind of go over the whole thing a few times until it's all attached and nicely flattened out. So here is when I'm going to speed up the video, and so you'll still be able to see what I'm doing, but we can move along more quickly on the video. And then you can get all of your wool attached down. And then we'll do the next step. So here we go, and we'll talk again once this is all the way attached. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the sky here, and it's all laying flat and attached. You can always go back over it if you need to, um, but I'm going to get this color, which is blue raspberry, and I'm just going to pull off, I'm going to hold and then pull off just a really small little wispy piece, and I'm going to arrange this up here in the sky. And I might have even gotten too much, so I'm going to maybe even pull off a little bit more there. And I'm just going to put that somewhere up here in the sky, and then I'm going to go ahead and poke that. Okay, so we have that, and now we're going to put the snow on. So here we are in our original, and starting here at the skyline, we're just going to cover the whole bottom up with this white roving. So they call it water chestnut, but this is obviously our natural white color. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. It looks like it needs a little smoothing out. I'm going to just draft it slightly and then 
we need a few rows of it here to cover the whole bottom. Just kind of smooth it out here. And get a little left. Okay, so once we have this arranged, covering the rest of the bottom, I'm going to just do the same thing and poke all of this until it attaches. So sometimes if there's a little bit of a spot that's not all the way covered, you can take your needle and really move the wool around a lot if you need to push it or pull it into place and then do the poking. So I will speed up the video again and then we will head on to the next step. Okay, so I've got the white all attached now, and the next thing we will do is put on our trees. So we're just doing this one row of trees here, and the way we're going to do that is with this batting. This is called suede. So I'm just going to take it and pull off little pieces. That might have even been a bit too big. You can always pull off more it's too big or add some in if it's too small. So I'm just going to roll it a little bit in my hands and then I'm going to take my fingers and kind of fold it and just kind of play with it here until I get a tree shape. Kind of something like an, an oval is what we're going for here. So I'm going to put that on very close here to where the snow and the sky meet and just keep in mind that your edge is right here where you have all the wool covering it up it's hard to remember but you don't want to position your tree way off the side there so we're going to decide where we're going to put it and then what we're going to do is just poke around the edges I'm going in kind of at an angle so if you can see here we're going in at an angle and we're going to poke in all around the edges because we don't want these to be flattened out all the way. We're leaving them so that they are still kind of popped up off the surface a little bit. So once we've got the edges secured by catching those fibers at that angle, then we can felt in the middle just a little bit more and just by poking very gently so we don't want to flatten them out all the way. So once we've got that part I'm going to get my black roving here and we'll do the tree trunks. So I have kind of a wispy end here and that's actually just what I want. So. If you need to pull it out a bit to get a thin little bit at the end there, just pull it out. And we're going to take it at the end and just poke right into the suede. And then you can see it's laying, coming down here. So I'm just going to poke right on that black down to where I want the trunk to start. And then I'm going to pinch here and hold pretty tightly as I pull this out a bit. And 
Once I've pulled it very thin, I'm going to double it back on itself here. So I'm just going to fold it back over on itself and I'm going to poke right where it's going. And then this part, I'm going to angle up this other way so that it's like the branch. This branch is headed in the other direction and we have that little branch there. So we're kind of creating a Y. So I'm going to poke just to where I want that branch to end and then I'm going to cut off the extra. I don't usually do a whole lot of cutting when I'm felting, but in this case that's really the easiest thing to do and then I'm just going to poke that end in really good. So that's our first tree trunk and then you can take the needle if you want to get the tree poked down just a little bit more. But again, it's not all the way flat. Then we do have a little bit of snow we can put on. So this is the white batting. And I like to take just a tiny little wispy piece of that and arrange it on the top of the tree. And then we're just going to poke in very gently just to get it secured. And that looks like just a little snow on the top. And you can vary that if you want it to be a little more snow covered, you can add a little bit more. And if you like just more of a, the look of a dusting, just a little bit less. So that's how we are doing the trees. I'm going to go ahead with the next one here. And I like to make them kind of different shapes so that they're not all looking exactly the same. So some could be a little shorter and wider, and some could be a little narrower. So we want them to kind of have an organic shape and not all be doing exactly the same thing. So again, I'm poking to get all the edges here. And then you can really do the snow either before or after we do the tree trunk and the little branches. So it works either way. I'm going to go ahead and put this snow on right now. And then I like to vary the tree trunks a bit too. So some I give branches and others I don't. Just kind of whatever I'm feeling like just so they're not all exactly the same. So for this one, I'm just going to pull off the excess there. And if it's too thick, I might even just go ahead and cut this off here. And then wherever you cut, it's good to poke a little bit extra there just to make sure all the fibers are secured. So that one I didn't give really much of a branch to at all, it just has more of a trunk showing. So we're just going to go along in the same way till we've got our whole row of trees in here. So I think I will go ahead and speed up the video and you can watch as I put in the rest of them and then we will move on to the next part. But we're doing just the same thing, we're just varying it slightly with each tree, which they almost do on their own anyway. It's hard to make them exactly the same. So we're not even trying to make them exactly the same. Alright, so here we go, and we'll talk again once our trees are in.
Okay, so now we have in our line of trees and let you compare it to the original here. So this one only ended up with six, this one had seven. So you can see it kind of varies and that's fine. So you have some liberty to make it your own and decide how many that you want to do. So now we're going to work on the snow and our little bit of frozen pond here. So I'm going to take a little bit of huckleberry, the blue that's left over here, and just put a little bit of that in the snow here. And I'm also going to take just a tiny bit of this light gray called marble. And I'm going to put just a little bit of that right here in the snow. And then I'm also going to take the black and do just a little bit of a very thin line here. So that's going to kind of create the look of a hillside and some shadow here. So I might put in two of those and then we'll poke this down and see if we like how that looks. And if we've got too much I might take out just a bit of that, and we, we just want just a little tiny bit running through there looking like more of a hillside going on. So we're just going to poke those down. So this might be like a bit of sky reflecting in the snow. And then we have a little bit of shadow here so that it looks like there's some, some slope and some hillsides going on in our terrain there. And I might also take just one more tiny bit of blue and put it where the trees are here, up by their trunks. Just make sure all of these fibers are poked down nicely. Go back over anything that's still looking a little too fuzzy or not attached. Okay, so now we're ready for our little bit of pond here at the bottom. So again, I might draft it out just a bit, and then we're going to put it in just on this side, kind of coming down here a bit. So it's not going to be all the way straight. So we're not going to go all the way across with that one. We'll put the next one here and pull off the excess. So it's coming down more at an angle. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and poke that down. I'm poking that down flat. And then we'll do the next part. So we'll speed up for that and then see what to do next. Okay, so I've gotten that on, and I'm not sure if I like the shape that I ended up with here at this side, so I might take a little bit of an extra piece and just put it on over top to change the shaping a little bit. So 
Okay, and then if we want a little bit more interest going on on our frozen little pond here, I'm going to take just a tiny bit of the blue that we had in the sky. That was the blue raspberry. So I'm going to put that on. And then I might also take just a few, just a little bit, tiny wisps, hard to even see there, of the color marble, and put that on over top too. Just to seem like we have a little bit more going on there. Even though it's subtle. Okay, so now we're ready to put on this little bit of frozen vegetation here at the edge of the pond. So we're doing that pretty much the same way as the trees with our suede batting. We're just going to pull off smaller pieces and roll it a little bit, but instead of making it circles, I'm going to leave them something more like this, so some smaller little plant type shapes. So remember our edge is here, so we don't need to put this where it's going off the edge too much. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to angle the needle and not poke it down all the way flat, but leave it very textured. I'm just catching the edges with the needle. And I'm just going to put a row of this all the way along the edge of the pond. And then we'll go back and Put in a little snow on them and we're going to highlight the edge with our black roving in the end. So I'm just kind of varying the shape of these little guys and just putting them all along the edge there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and speed up the video again and you can watch as I finish putting these in and always go back and change them a little bit. Kind of like a little bit more on the edge here and a little thinner towards the other end, but it it can kind of evolve as it as it goes. Sometimes it does end up a little different. All right, so I'll just finish that up real quick and then we'll be on to the last parts. Okay, so now I've got my little bit of vegetation on there, and I'm going to go back to my white batting, and we're just going to take and some little, little pieces and even pull it to kind of thin it out, and this is just going to go on here on the vegetation, kind of like we had on the trees, just a little hint of snow on top of them here. They look nice and frozen. So again, I'm just poking very lightly and we're just arranging this kind of randomly, but towards the top of these guys. Just a little hint of snow on them. And I might go ahead and poke down this white a little more behind these guys. We want that looking flat and then these are poking up a bit off of so that off of our backing so that they're a little more 3D if you will. Okay, so the very last thing we're going to do is to take our black roving again, and I'm going to pull the end out, 
and we're just going to put a line in here. I can show you on our original. We're just putting in this black line here just to kind of differentiate and give a little shadow there. A little more dimension, I guess, is the better word. So I'm just putting that line in just by pulling the roving out so it's very thin there at the end and then poking right on top of it. So then when I get to this part, I'm just pulling, pinching here so that it doesn't tear off and then just pulling. And once I get that part poked down, I'm going to pinch again and pull. So we're just doing that the whole way. If you do happen to make a mistake and pull it all the way off here, it's not really a bad mistake or anything. You're just going to secure that whole piece and then if you need to go back over it to make it a little thicker, you just take the end of your roving again and start poking on the end, overlapping, and just poke all the way back to the side here. And that's it. So now I'm just going to go over the flat parts again just a little bit, make sure all of our fibers are secure. looking pretty good and now we can go ahead and pull it up off of the mat. So you have to give it a bit of a tug because the wool fibers go through the backing and down into the mat so it can get a little bit stuck on there. And I'm just going to get my scissors and we'll cut off the excess from the edges. Okay, so we'll just be discarding that. My scissors again. So once you've pulled it up and cut off the excess, it's a good idea to put it back on the mat one last time and just do a little more poking. Sometimes when you pull it up, it seems like the fibers detach a little bit from the backing. They don't look quite as flat as they had been. I just want to go over the whole thing again. I'm not doing much at all on the trees or our little vegetation down here by the pond, but especially on the parts that we want to be more flat where the roving is. I'm going to poke just a little more on those to make sure it's all secure. Okay, so when I'm happy with that, it's going to lift up pretty easily, and we'll try it in the frame. So at this point, it's possible you'd need to trim a little bit more off of the bottom, or really any of the sides. Um, grab my backing here. But this is going in pretty easily, so we're going to go ahead and try it here. But you may need to trim down a bit more before it goes easily into your frame. And there we have it. So I hope that you like the way that yours turned out and that you really enjoyed doing this project. If you want to find our other kits or some more supplies to make other things, uh, please come see us on Etsy at Felted Sky or at FeltedSky.com. So thanks for joining me, and as always, happy felting. <laughs>